So sure, today wasn't really what I'd call a hardware day at Google I.O., but if you know anything about this company, there was a very important uh, sort of teaser if we're speculating. As yes, Google just showed us Android 12, and that's actually not everything they could be hinting on. And speaking of necessary changes, Wear OS just got a major overhaul, and Google finally decided to bite the bullet and get some experts on board. And Apple just launched some interesting and confusing upgrades to Apple Music because, uh, well, you know, it's Apple. I'm Jaime Rivera, and uh, yes, Android Beta is already installed on my phone, and my phone is already crashing, so proceed with caution. This is Parker Now Daily. The official news today begin with deals, of course, and we actually have deals on new products. Again, don't forget the time codes on the description to allow you to skip the section if you want. Amazon currently has the Blue M1 entry-level iMac listed for $12.59, and uh, the only other base model listed is the gray one for $12.99, so that's a pretty solid $40 discount on a product that's barely shipping right now. Now, moving on to Verizon, you can get up to $800 in savings if you have a device to trade in, even if it has a broken display. However, they're also running a buy one, get one free deal where if you buy an iPhone, the second second one is $1,000 off or so. I mean, that pretty much makes it free. Just make sure you read the fine print because I'm sure there's more than meets the eye. Now, heading back to Amazon, the OnePlus 8T is currently $153 off, leaving the 12 gigs of RAM variant for $597. Finally, Amazon also has the Galaxy Tab S7 for $130 off, leaving that at $899 with half a terabyte of storage. We have more deals on gaming monitors, Jabra headphones, which are my favorites, and and more in the description. Now, let's move on to Samsung and their not-so-conventional devices. We've actually got uh, more than one thing to talk about today, so let's focus on the weird stuff. Sure, we're currently waiting for the Galaxy Z Fold 3 and the Z Flip 3, but it looks like Samsung has more in the bag. According to a new blog post from Samsung, the company's Samsung display division has revealed that their rollable or slidable screen will pave the way for making smartphones with extended screens. Through the blog post, they mention how this allows users to carry tablet-sized displays in a pocketable form factor, a similar premise to the Z Fold, but with a different implementation, I guess. Of course, this post only serves us as official confirmation that Samsung will eventually release a rollable smartphone, but we don't really have a date, and it's not like if LG is still here to provide some major competition with that rollable, which, by the way, LG is selling to its employees only. We'll see what and whenever we get this, and I just hope that the leak certifications start rolling in soon. Wow, Diego, that... Come on, that's a terrible pun. All right, let's talk about Cupertino and Apple Music. I seriously wanted to make a separate video on my thoughts on this topic, and I might. But uh, for now, let's focus on the news. After being rumored for the last week or so, the company announced a new update to Apple Music where they're introducing spatial audio with support for Dolby Atmos. They're also rolling out lossless audio to the entire 75 million songs they have on the platform. How this will work is that spatial audio in Dolby Atmos will be on by default if you're using AirPods or Beats that have the H1 or W1 chip, as well as the speakers of the latest Apple products. Now, the tricky part is when we talk about lossless audio and honestly for things that exceed what Apple can do at least yet. So as for the preamble, Apple will be using their Apple lossless audio codec, which can be turned on in the music settings under the quality tab. It's based on tiers that will start with CD quality, which is 16 bit at 44.1 kilohertz, going up to 24 bits at 192 kilohertz for audio files. Now, the problem is that let's just say Cupertino drove itself into a wall since the iPhone 7 when they kind of killed the headphone jack. 
In non-Apple fashion, these new features will be open to Apple Music subscribers for free, and they will be able to get it next month, but that's if you have gear that can play this, as we know that Bluetooth technically can't. Not even the deck on Apple's dongles for lightning, or even the wire on the AirPods Max that you have to buy separately can provide this level of quality, at least yet. Stay tuned to what we get at WWDC because this gets really convoluted. Even HomePods don't support certain of these features, which makes you wonder exactly why Apple is doing this if not to compete against Spotify that announced Spotify HD a while ago and we've got Tidal and so many services and Apple knows that they're not on top and yet you don't have hardware that can really take advantage of it. Again, yet. But yes, it's Google I.O. day, so let's move the spotlight onto Mountain View. I mean, today's announcements were all software, and if you want details on things like search and maps, I'll link you to our coverage at pocketnow.com in the description. As for mobile, let's start with a long overdue update to Wear OS as it seems that Google finally woke up and smelled the coffee. The company claims that this is the biggest update in years and actually took a couple of collaborations starting with Samsung. The next version of Wear OS is actually a mesh of the best of Wear OS, which wasn't much, but also Tizen, which is a major deal. We're talking 30% faster app launches, smoother animations, but probably the best thing is getting longer battery life as they take advantage of low power our cores while allowing you to get your heart rate checked permanently. You know, stuff that Garmin's and Polar's have been able to do like forever. They are also working on making the user interface better, starting with better navigation controls to help you switch between applications through double button presses and more useful tiles. Google Pay and YouTube Music are also getting integrated, like finally. And since we already started with the magic word, Google again finally announced something that involves their Fitbit acquisition, where they claim that they want to bring world-class health and fitness with their best services coming to Wear OS, things that Apple has been doing with the Apple Watch like forever. I imagine that some of that permanent heart rate tracking is part of that because, I mean, that's been part of the Fitbit search since day one. So, okay, with these announcements, I can finally say that I'm excited for a Wear OS update, especially with those Galaxy Watch rumors from last week. I just hope that we can update our existing hardware with it because if they make people have to buy a new watch for this, I, yeah, that's not gonna go well. And finally, for the hottest news today, let's talk about the big announcements. Android 12 and, well, something else that could lead to more information on uh, what to expect with the Pixel 6. Now, maybe the best way to describe Android 12 is by calling it as a major redesign. They began the section by showing Material U, which now lets you choose your own styles and color palettes on your Android phone based on basic things like your wallpaper paper, and yeah, you can expect it to extend to other Google services. Now, according to Google, this is their most personal version of Android yet, giving users more granularity in what they can customize. We can expect a major design overhaul from the lock screen down to the system settings. Uh, we're also getting a new quick settings menu, which will now favor things like Google Pay and other buttons that are more accessible to you. We can also expect Android 12 to be 22% faster and more power efficient than before, and they also made a huge deal on privacy. We now get a new privacy dashboard that lets you see what applications have access to what, down to your location, camera, and microphone access, and you can actually deactivate these fairly easily. And aside from the camera and microphone indicators, Quick Settings now lets you disable these with a simple toggle as well. You can actually get Android 12 beta today, and not just on pixels, but watch out as people on OnePlus phones haven't had much luck. Now, as for where things get even more interesting, yes, we didn't get any hardware, uh, but a ton of the wallpaper shown on the new version of Android had the time set for 9.30, which was also the time set on the Pixel 6 renders we got from John 
processor last week, which was also on par with every Android leak we got today. Now, if you know anything about Google history, this would actually not be the first time that the company hints to a new product date with little things like device imagery and things you see on their lock screen. Uh, could it be that we're getting the Pixel 6 on September 30th, which makes sense considering that every phone is launching earlier this year? Uh, anyways, in today's question, let us know. What do you think about Android 12? Do you like it? Do you not? Because I already installed it on my Pixel 4 XL. I can't really say that I see much difference yet. You know, betas, they, you know, they start some way and eventually let's just hope that everything that's on the beta gets rolled out or at least what got announced, but we'll see. Let us know what you think in the comments. I think that, yeah, cool that we get a design overhaul, uh, but what about more features? Friends, again, if you want to get the news earlier, follow us on pocketnow.com and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. You can also follow us on social medias. Our extended coverage happens on Instagram. And follow me on my personal handles to see me, uh, you know, go through the curse of the early adopter because that's my job. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.